Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Workers and Resources and uh, the Chemical Place. It's getting set up today. This is the video for the chemicals. So uh, there's still a few things that aren't done. Some tunnels and stuff, walkways and stuff that aren't done. The construction crews are getting on it and I'll probably end up just paying to finish it uh, by the end of this video to get it fully up and running. But uh, I want to talk about a couple of things today that I, did, I don't want to say I missed them. Uh, one of them, I completely misread them. The other one, uh, it's... There's an optimization thing that some people may notice that I'm going to address. So let's start with that latter one first. Each chemical plant makes 0.81 tons of chemicals. Now, if we add all of these up, it's, of course, just under 10 tons of chemicals. Some of you might have pointed out or may have noticed that the chemical or the plastic factory will use three tons of chemicals at maximum production. This means we need 18 tons of chemicals coming in to fully do these buildings. We're obviously not making 18 tons of chemicals. So what's going on with the plastics factory? Why have so many? So what I was going to do was expand this even further out this way and, and to keep it, make it even bigger so that we can keep going with it. Um, but I think I've changed my mind with this. And instead, I think we're going to limit this to using basically the equivalent of three of these. Uh, I'm going to leave six of them up because I've already paid for them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the workforce on each of these to a third of its max. And that will correct this imbalance and allow us to make plastics. The reason for this is because we're not going to use that many plastics. At least not in the beginning, not for some time. And uh, by the time we do have it, um, like, honestly, the money that we're bringing in, I can auto pay for some plastics that is deficient. Um, if I would say if you're building this, if you're if you're playing this game yourself and you want to be totally self-sufficient or whatever, like absolutely we can expand. And that that was the the goal with this is to have a completely separate thing. It looks like just like this basically, and just be like, blop, it's right over here now. You know, now we have two of them. You know, and uh, th that was kind of the idea, but it, I don't think it's necessary. So uh, we'll we'll just underproduce plastics for a little while, and then once we're full in these warehouses. This is another thing that's interesting. Once we're full in these warehouses, we're not going to be producing them at maximum capacity anyway because we're never going to be using plastics at, at the maximum amount we're producing. So in summary, we're always going to be overproducing plastics anyway. And once our storage is full, we'll stop being able to produce at full capacity, which will allow us to accumulate more chemicals anyway. Okay? So there's that. Now, there's a second one that I completely misread, and it's going to require an entire new huge section to be used. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. First, I want to get this operational. So, we have grain storages. Each of them, you guys remember, I, I bought 111 tons of crops just to kind of get these started. And uh, we, ha we now have the wood cutting posts, and each one of these wood cutting posts have two trucks in them. So, we're going to have that done too. I've configured this... Uh, we're going to call it Chem Pass 1, Passenger Train for Chemicals 1. Uh, Chem Pass 2 is right here. And I've configured this one to bring everybody to the chemical plants exclusively. So even though this plastics is really close to this, we're not bringing plastics people in here. This is going to allow me to configure the trains a little bit more accurately and get the right people in the right location by bringing passengers to this passenger platform for the chemicals. And now we don't need as many passengers for the chemicals or as many workers for plastics, I mean. So... It used to be that we would need 60 times 6. Now we only need 20 times 6. That's a sufficient decrease in the number of people we need. And we need to get the unemployed brought over here. So um, we currently have 37, 32 total in the nation uh, living with their parents. I've been expanding housing. So we have uh, this housing block is, is basically done, looks like. But these guys can't shop very easily. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, pay for the shopping center to be done just so it's here. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and finalize this because um, I want it done and I want it working right now. And then we'll get all this stuff hooked up to distribution and everything uh, as we go as well. I think as long as the road is done up to the shopping center, I'm good with... Well, actually, it's going to be done up to... It's, it's, it doesn't need to be up to the shopping center. Dang it. It only needs to be up to here. And then the forklifts can take it from there. So we're going to go ahead and buy forklifts and get this started. We're gonna, for the time being, we're just gonna auto buy fuel. I am gonna have, I am gonna be bringing fuel around, but just to kind of get it moving, um, just to keep it operational, we're gonna auto buy fuel and to keep it going, okay? Uh, and then we have this, and then we have this. So all of this is done. We just need the logistics to come and do it. So I'm gonna bring, I think it's uh, you guys. Yep, 
these trucks are actually very busy. There's not a whole lot left for them. Um, I am probably going to need another one. We need a lot of distribution centers in this game, pretty much. Uh, let me just grab that warehouse, and we're going to tell you to lo unload uh, alcohol, clothing, food, and electronics to that location. And I'm going to add, whoops, let's add the meat storage as well. Can't add meat there. Can't find a path. Oh, right. There. there we go. Can I do it now? There we go. And then I want you to unload meat into that storage unit too. Okay. And then what we're going to do with the forklift is we're going to add these two warehouses as a load point and the grocery store as an unload point. And this will just start working. And of course, we don't have power here yet. So uh, let's take a quick detour down over here. Now, I've added a whole new power line to get to this area because we're going to be using all of this space, I think, for the second industry that I need to come up with. And it's going to be a shit ton of workers. I'll talk about that uh, near the end of the video. But we have to uh, take a look at here. I've added a whole new extra dedicated line here. So it's not... It's not branching off another one of these lines. And let me just real quick, because the comments remind you that red on these lines is not a bad thing. Red just means it's sending the maximum of its capacity. And that's a good thing. We want to be able to do that. This line is red. And this is mostly a response to comments. This line is red because it's a full export. We're sending 18. Let's look, at, I'll just look at it, right? We're sending a full 18 exporting here, right? We're selling it for 5.4 rubles per megawatt hour and we're sending 18 consistently at a time okay that's how that's working and this is on a base of 60 right so this is you know calculate how much money we're making there right uh these lines will hopefully eventually pay for themselves <laughs> although this entire line was built with resources uh and it's kind of interesting how they do it they delivered resources to the power plant and it just sort of kept adding the supply to the lines and then the lines just appear once everything's delivered. So it looks to me like when you build lines with resources, you just have to deliver it to sort of the starting point or the base point or whatever. And uh, it just kind of circulates around the whole thing. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, um, this one here is red. Uh, these two are red because there's, again, the maximum amount is being sent here. Now we have a branch. So it branches off here, but it's limited in how much it's allowed to branch off because that's why it's a lower capacity line, bringing it all the way over there. But then it continues and it continues. And then that side is also selling rubles we're also exporting 18 megawatts here so two completely separate sources locked at 18 megawatts to sell it right making lots of money uh and then we come over here and this is red because again it's near its maximum capacity as we come this way though you'll see why it splits here and then it goes orange not quite capacity but it just means that most of the power is headed this direction why is most of the power headed this direction, you may ask? Well, because it comes over here to provide power to the rest of our civilization, but it also continues from this point and goes to export, where we are exporting 13.7 at this location. So we just add up all of this megawatt that I'm that I'm exporting right now, right? Um, it's We're getting 13 now on this location, and that is going to make this line a little bit more orange. But it's redder in this area because it's still like, the full supply of that line is bringing it this way before it splits. Uh, so that's, that's why this is red. And then it comes off this way, which is green. And the thing about these exports, I, I just want to remind people just because I, again, I want to respond to comments as best as I can. The thing about these exports is this is the amount of wattage of energy to sell up to this amount. It is not a consistent amount. You are not robbing power from your civilization by maxing this out. All you're doing is saying, any access power up to this amount, export it, okay? So if my civilization needs more power, I will export less. That's just how that works. And it happens automatically. Now you might be wondering, well, if that's the case, then why would anyone want to limit it? What's the point of limiting it? I'm glad you asked, because somebody did ask that. The point of limiting it is because while you are exporting the maximum amount of power, you are also using the maximum amount of inputs on your power plant. And maybe you can't input enough to satisfy that. Maybe you don't have enough, for example, nuclear fuel coming into the power plant to be able to actually produce that much power. Because the more power you produce, the faster you will use your fuel, whatever that is, whether it's oil or coal or whatever. So you can limit how much you're allowed to export to match whatever you're able to input into your power plant. Okay? Easy. Okay. 
Now that I've answered those questions related to power, this is a dedicated line coming straight from the power plant all the way down here. Another 18 line, might as well. And we're gonna we're gonna split it off, and I'm gonna allow it to go that way. So I, I wanted it to be a little split here. And some people have mentioned uh, about like well, about fire coverage and things on these. These are very cheap to replace. If this burns down, I will get a notification and a big sound effect that goes crumble, crumble, crumble. And I'll be like, oh, that's unfortunate. And then I will just hit the build button and rebuild it. It's not a big deal. They're very, very cheap. Uh, the lines themselves do not catch fire, so I don't have to worry about those. So as we come all the way down over here, and it comes to this. Now, this is a 14 line, so I'm planning on having the capacity for a lot of power in this area and it's probably i would have to say pr most likely we are going to use uh, i, I want to say at the minimum 70 percent of this open space that you're seeing right now <laughs> and i'll show you why it's pretty absurd i don't know if it's really worth doing it i might just auto purchase this stuff and call it good but in the spirit of the game, it might be one. It might be good to just experiment uh, with how that needs to happen. First, though, let's get power over here. So uh, I'm going to take a line from here and probably put the. You know, we could put it right here. That's not out of the question. Put the transformer right here. I'm all right with that. I, I think it puts it in fire coverage and stuff, so it's fine. Uh, so let's get the high voltage line. We'll go 14 on this, or how about this? We'll, we'll take, let's, let's let's put eight this way. Eh. I have to wonder if I even need this now, to be honest. Whatever, it's, it's again, it's an up two thing. So uh, we can go 14. I guess I'm gonna have to go this way. I was gonna go straight across, but I think I wanna use the space. So I'll, I'll go this way with it. Like that's fine. Okay, so we're connecting it up to this transformer, right? And so now, again, we still don't have any being used here, but we probably will soon. So in this area, we have all these houses, and there's no power here. There's no power to the cinema. There's no power to the pubs and stuff. Well, even though they're full of alcohol, that's fine. There's no power to this stuff, and a lot of that's because the substations that I have set up to provide power are not hooked up to any lines, right? So let's fix that. So we're going to take... Oh, and one, one more thing. I want to look at this. So it says 179%. It just means I'm going to need a maximum of two in this area, which that's why I have two here. Uh, or a minimum, I suppose, of two. And I also have another one here to help out as well. And this will kind of share with these two lines. So uh, to get the power lines sorted out here, uh, I know that there's like a case to be made to make cheaper lines. But the thing is, again, this is just a capacity. It's... If, 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 if it's allowed to fluctuate higher, like if I see this going red, I'm going to have to rebuy them, right? I don't want to have to do that. So I'm just going to take my 6.6 .6 million that I have and I'm just going to spend them to get this done. So we're going to say this line goes out this way. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. You're not green. Hold on. Okay, you are green. Never mind. The overlay has to be on. Okay, um, bring you out to here, then over and across. Uh, I kind of want to keep the trees, but this is going to delete them. Nope, I guess not. Cool. All the way over like this. And then I'm going to go straight this way with this line. I think actually I'm going to go to the... Yeah, I'm changing my mind here. Uh, we're going to go to the train track first and then over with the tracks. Because there's it's significantly more likely that I'll have buildings next to the road than it will be the tracks. There we go. And we'll just go straight over from there. So that'll provide power to this area and get the lights on for all these buildings. Uh, now we need to do it behind here. And uh, it's a pretty simple thing to do. We'll just run this the same way. Exactly right alongside this. And then I need to go, I think, straight back from here. So we're going to say from this point. Oh, hey, wait, what's going on? Come on now. No? Let's, okay, what's the deal? Are you... All right, hang on. You're being difficult. I understand. Here you go. All the way, and then I need to line it up with that so it goes right about here. All right. And then we'll go straight this way, right behind these buildings to there. That'll provide power to this area and get the lights on for these buildings after they're built. I'm going to evaluate this. If I need more, then I'll grab, grab another line and go this way. But that's going to get the lights on for these buildings. Now, these are empty. Even though I have got this many people living with their parents, these are empty. Somebody 
pointed this out to me in a previous video and I totally missed the button. Like whatever, I didn't know it was there. Uh, we have this 20 workers without a job thing and there's these two buttons here where you can relocate citizens. I guess you have to do this manually. I figured people would move on their own, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It also looks to me like this line is maxed out. That's interesting. A couple of maxed out lines. Might have to look at that. We'll see. I don't see anything really like going out. I see some yellow, but I don't see anything actually going out yet. So I think we're fine. Um, anyway, I'm going to relocate citizens to these other buildings. And we can just click the buttons, basically, and they get relocated. And I think the, the, the case for doing this is that there's a lot of people living with their parents and they're close by. And if they're living with their parents and there's a house that's within walking distance, they'll move to that one. At least I, I hope that that's the case. So we can test this, I suppose, by this uh, building at the very end here. I can say, I want you guys to relocate over to here. And what happens there is that this building has 69 people. And if there's anybody living with their parents, they may move out and walk to this building and fill it back up. I'm hoping that that's how that works. Uh, we'll see. I do have 70 in there now. If I, if I scan time ahead a little bit, yeah, they're starting to fill it back up a little bit. So that's good. We want to see that. Um, so we can move people over into this area and um, get them. There's no goods to sell here. I am going to temporarily... This is all temporary until we get the logistics set up for it because I need to make people happy. We're going to auto buy things in this shop until we can get the supply necessary in the storages. So there's at least something that they can buy here. And then the new people that we've added to this area can now do that. Now we have 167 workers here. We're going to get them to work, all right? And uh, there's 92 workers here. There's also going to be workers over here. So you can see the development of Sosnikova is well underway. We've added a lot of extra buildings here. Somebody made a comment that related to like how I'm using the same style building every time and that I should do some diversity. So I currently have, I've, I've currently used so far um, this building, this building, this building, these two buildings, um, and these two buildings along with this building. Uh, wait, no, it's, yeah, it's the one with, the one with 127. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I have different types of flats that I've been using. It's not all the same. I, I realize that the majority of people live in a structure that looks very similar. This is kind of how Soviet, the Soviet Union was. Like their their housing was all very similar, but there are some diversity. Like these buildings are different. You can visually see them. These buildings are different than these ones, even though they look kind of the same. Um, these ones, of course, are very different than these ones, uh, which look very different from these ones. So there is some diversity here, um, but the, the fact of the matter is 189 workers can fit in this building. There's no reason for me to take up the exact same amount of space for a building that takes 93 workers, especially when the quality rating on this is 90 is plus 90%. Um, it just doesn't make sense to, to use different housing unless you have a specific stylistic reason, which yeah, there's there's case to be made on that. Uh, sure. Um, I just I need more workers for the jobs right now. So I'm less into the aesthetics of it uh, at the time being. Hopefully that makes sense. So um, lots and lots of people have been moved over here in a very similar way. Click there and click the building you want to move them over to. So there are some people over here and I want them to work at this train station, which has now been upgraded to be the big train station instead of the small one. And we're going to have passengers eventually be picked up here and taken over to the chemical plant. For the time being, let's just get some people working on chemicals. So we're going to take our, we need a couple of things here. Let's look at, look at the train depot. So in the train depot, I have two trains that are kind of ready to go, okay? The first is my meat train. We're gonna talk about that. That's the second half of this video. Uh, the next is the crops train. I really wanted a different color box car, but I'm stuck with the blue ones because it's the only ones for this era, for this, for this year area. Uh, so I, I have to have these blue ones. And I was really hoping that the blue ones would be like, you know, you could point at it and go, oh, that's the food train. Cause it's the, the blue ones are the food train. You'd be able to tell that. Uh, but unfortunately, the only boxcars that are available right now are this blue color. So it's kind of what it is. In any case, this electric locomotive is responsible for bringing crops. It currently has a capacity of 772 tons. I think that's acceptable. And what I want you to do, little train. First, let me connect you so that you can get there. Um, I think it's probably okay to do this. Uh, or at least I thought it was. You know, what the heck's going on? Uh, let's bring you 
bring you this way? So what's the deal here? I, I know that there's electrical lines here. I was just kind of hoping I can go through them. There we go. Uh, yep, okay. And go like that. Okay, easy. This is just going to let the train get in there initially. I doubt anyone's ever going to use this aside from there. Um, but honestly, I could probably disconnect this. If this becomes a problem and other trains are using this for no reason, um, then I can go ahead and disconnect it. It's fine. So anyway, I want you to stop here and I want you to load crops and you're going to wait till you're loaded. Then you can come all the way over here. And what I want you to do is you're going to use the, the track that is not this one. So this gravel train, which I've now went and refilled, um, just so it's sitting here full is using this track. So I would like you to use this waypoint and that's going to get you on this track so that you can bypass this train and come all the way over to here. And then you're going to unload the crops and you're going to wait till you're unloaded. That's your route. That's what you're doing. Go. And so we're going to see crops now be transported over where it needs to go. I might have a jamming problem here for some reason. What's going on? The food train is where it's not supposed to be. This thing happens constantly. Uh, food train, you're, doesn't it doesn't pay attention to waypoints. There's two different directions. When this thing is over here, there's two ways this thing can reach the waypoint I've set for it. Which is it's really stupid, right? It can either go like... It, it's supposed to hit this waypoint right here, but instead it, it kind of like decides to go a different direction first and then it comes around and hits it and it's it's really dumb anyway um this waypoint here yeah it's all oh, it's on the bridge okay so i'm telling it to come this way and hit that waypoint and then go in but instead it decides to go around to hit that waypoint on its way back in th which makes no sense because it'd have to go past the station it has to stop at in order to get there it's very strange so i'm gonna have to make a modification to this food train too but in any case to get it to move now I'm just going to go ahead and do that really quick. That should get it to move and then replace the chain. And at least we'll get it to move. I don't know why you are stopping for that train, though. That doesn't make any sense. You shouldn't be stopping for that train, though, because you're losing workers by doing so. So what's, what gives? Let me see this really quick. Why would you stop here? I feel like there's no reason to stop here. Uh, huh. Let me get you. If I do this, then the other train can't come through here. Well, maybe it can. No, because then if the train needs to stop, it'll stop here and then it'll tie up the whole line. I can't have signals here. That was the problem. I'm going to let this train go because... I, all I did is add signals and take them away, and now the train's perfectly safe, I guess. So, okay. In any case, that's the food train doing its thing. Uh, yeah. So, over here, we're going to see that electric train is going to make its way over here. And it's going to load up on the crops that are so, that are connected to this. In this case, it's 448 here, 447 here. We've got uh, almost a full silo there. It's at 84%. And then uh, we've got this as well. And I actually think I want to have this be just 100% uh, if, if it lets me do it, which it doesn't look like it will, so I guess not. But yeah, anything over 90%. Then we have the reserves, and that's got quite a bit in it as well. And these are where the forklifts come in. They're just taking things out of these. They have set to unload here and load here. So these ones get loaded up uh, by the trucks, but they also get loaded up by the forklifts as well, just to keep a steady supply uh, coming in here from a reserve area. Okay, so I would really like to see the crop strain, if I could see it um, somewhere. Hi, crop strain. I can tell the difference between these two because this one has a lighter, uh, lighter train. It's like this, this I don't know, turquoise green color. Um, and then we have this one, which is clearly green, like a very green. Very, very green for crops, basically, is the only way I could do it. Uh, but this is also a newer train. It's um, 85 tons empty weight, 80, uh, 3480 kilowatt engine power compared to the 3120. And it also, this one also weighs more. Same top speed. So just in other words, the crop train is more efficient than the food train. I should probably change that since the food train is going to be going more mileage, but um, it, it doesn't matter. I don't think it really in the end matters. So this crops train is very long and it's going to take a while to get through where it needs to go. 
Uh, but I like it. I like it a lot. Look at it go. It's very nice. Uh, okay, so that's going to bring crops over here. Next is passengers. Go back to the train yard. So I've got this passenger train. And we're going to rename this to um, Chemtrain, I guess. <laughs> Chemtrain. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going ahead and name it Chemtrain 1 because there's going to be two of them. So this is Chemtrain 1. And what Chemtrain 1 is going to do is it is going to come on over here. Well, we need a couple of things for Chemtrain 1, because I, I think I want it to go two different directions. Eh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I would like it to start by getting passengers from here, I guess. There's a lot of trains already doing this, but as we get this built out, I'm actually taking some of the trains that have a route to stop here, and I'm having them stop here instead. The only thing allowing me, the only thing uh, I'm waiting on is the train tracks to be done, which, you know, we're currently working on building them. And then uh, once they get the train tracks built out to here, I'll get it connected with the T-junction here, and then I can have trains do that. So right now we're gonna have you stop here, and we're gonna only have uh, workers. This is a worker train. We don't need passengers for this. We also want people to have at least a basic education for this. Got a slithering snake of a train right here. I love it. Ah, uh, yeah. Stop and wait, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Anyway, you're going to take the people all the way over, and you are going to stop at this station. Now, the only way to stop at this station, I don't actually have to mark this for a waypoint, because the only way to get to that station is to use this track. There is, There are no crossings here. This is, These are all two-way tracks, but they are exclusive to a single train to use them. The only change I'll have to make in this particular plan is when I start implementing a train to come into this area for, for the plastics. Because then they're going to start sharing this line. So I'll address that when I get there. And we'll start adding some signals to bypass. Like, it's basically a train will be able to get on this track temporarily to bypass something and then move around. That'll happen eventually. We'll probably be using the gravel train route. Since the gravel train will travel a lot less frequently than the crop train will. But for the time being, this is good to go. So we're just going to have... I think we'll allow passengers here. Mostly because workers that are going to return from work are considered passengers they're not workers anymore so we're just gonna hit this and uh yeah we should hit go and this is gonna get people into this area now actually i don't want to hit go uh no i don't want to hit go yet i don't want to hit go yet and the reason for that is be well mm, let's just let's just see how it operates um I, I want to add more cars there's not enough capacity 325 is not good enough here i need a lot more cars for this um, so I'm actually, I'm actually just going to do it now. There's no reason to like do it later. Um, cause the train is going to have to, uh, come all the way back and it's going to take time. So whatever, let's bring this back. And from here, I would like to add another passenger wagon. Let's see which one is the best. 155 is good. I can deal that. So this train now has a total passenger capacity of what? 790. Now that's about, that's better. Um, I'm going to do one more. All right. Now you can go do your route. Now, what I think I'd like to do for this, eventually, we're going to have to change what this does. Hey, there he goes. Well, I think what I'd like to eventually do with this is have this go in a cycle. So this train would end up going to this station, picking people up, go to this station, pick people up, and then go. And then there's another train, which is going to pick people up from here and bring them into work over there too. Um, so I, eventually that's, that's the solution. That's what we're going to be doing. And uh, we already have a train that's bringing them into uh, Charlobinsk to, to work in th those areas, but we'll have to have a lot more people waiting to work here. And Sosnikova is going to become another big worker hub. It's right on the border. Like I can't even move the camera back far enough. Like, unless I'm looking straight down to even see these houses, unless I go this way, of course. So, um, so yeah, chemicals are going to start getting worked on. We have crops ready to go. We have four, we don't have four cliffs. Okay. We don't have forklifts. Again, temporarily, we're going to buy fuel. I'm going to solve that. It's going to be a dedicated video solving the fuel and distributing it everywhere. Uh, but for the time being, auto buy the fuel and get it going. It's also very close to the border, so it doesn't cost me a whole lot for delivery there either. Uh, we already have these four forklifts already done. Okay, so I need tasks for these guys. I didn't do that yet. 
So you're going to take crops out of these four. You're going to load crops from these. Then you're going to unload the crops on these, let's say these four will be yours, okay? And you're going to load, no, you're going to unload the, the crops here, okay? Actually, we're just going to go unload completely. Yeah, yeah, because you're going to be also doing wood. So brings me to my next thing where we're also doing wood. Uh, so uh, this is also going to go here, here, uh, huh. Mm hmm. Okay. I have three forklift garages, and this is the reason why I did that. So I'm thinking. Well, I thought I had three. I'm only seeing two. Why am I only seeing two? Two might be good enough, though. Let's see if two is enough. We're gonna take. Say this one is gonna bring them from the backside, backside crops. So we're gonna eliminate the. I think it's the first two. Storage four and storage three. So eliminate these two sources and then add the uh, storage here. Okay. And we're just going to get things brought in right there. Okay. So forklifts off they go doing things, doing the things. Uh, and then you guys need tasks too. You're going to get the crops from these two sources and distribute them like this. Uh, I could have swore I had another forklift garage. What in the world? Maybe I should I should probably put one like right here. I could have swore I had another one. We're going to have these two reference here, but not here. And then we'll just have you get these two. And then storage is the load. Chemical plants are the unload. 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 Uh, storage medium is, is actually for you guys. Storage medium is going to be load. Yep. And then the chemical plants are unload. And then for you guys, the storages should be a simultaneous load unload. So we don't need, it doesn't matter if we, <clears throat> it doesn't matter if we say unload at the wood cutting post because they won't do it. Um, but just for the sake of really designating it, you're loading from here. Uh, and then you're gonna unload and load from the storage because these forklifts are responsible for putting the wood in here. I'm pretty sure I need another forklift garage. I want to say that this one was also going to help out. Maybe that was the plan. This one was going to help out with that. It's possible. Let me just add these like this. And then uh, we're also going to designate those two as something you're going to use. But we're going to say load from there. Uh, storage is good. Wooden cutting post will be a unload only. There we go. And then we'll just make sure you have forklifts and make sure you have fuel. And then you should be ready to rock there, I think. But we'll just have you do that. And then I want to say that this will then go off and do things uh, as it needs to. There's the forklift. So all going off and doing things. Lovely. Okay, good. So crop train is coming in. There it is. Bing, bing. Did you pick up the crops? Oh, you certainly did. 770 tons. And you're going to pull right alongside this train and use this side of the tracks instead of using this one. And you can see... It's going to actually stretch itself in there too, but it's unloading crops into the, into the silos. So there we go. It's working. It's working. Now I just need to make sure people can get there. Um, the underground paths are all done. You can see them right here like this. Nice. Yeah, it's very nice. These ones are still getting worked on. Uh, looks like the underground paths are done here, but the end points are not. And then over here, it looks like there's a couple of end points that might be done, but uh, maybe not. But they're still working on it. I have an extra walkway underground that brings people over to these two. So the woodcutters need to come in on this passenger train so that they can go over there. Um, so for the, for the near future, I guess, just to make sure we can get this working, I'm going to temporarily purchase just a little bit of wood in these two open storages. Manual. If you're going to purchase just a little bit of wood here just to get that going so that they uh, can use it to what they need to do. I, I got to test the workflow, make sure it's make sure people are doing what they're supposed to do. So, and then once we get people in here, they'll start cutting down the wood and everything will be fine. Okay, good, electricity problem, where is that? All the new houses? Oh, the old houses. All right, why is this fluctuating? Why 
Why in the world are you fluctuating? Yeah, that's right. Shape up, buddy. What the heck is wrong with you? <laughs> All right. Uh, I need to make a change to electronics as well. The trucks are not going to this and getting this correctly. Um, let me just really quick see if that's a... That might be my, my, might be my problem here. <laughs> Maybe I didn't do it right. Warehouse 5. I'm going to change this to electronics storage. And then I want to see where that is. Electronic storage is load. Okay, that's why. It needs to be designated as an unload. There it goes. Now everybody will use it. Oh. <laughs> All right, good. So, um, wait. Wait, no, 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 load is correct. No, no, load is correct. Because you're taking things from that source. Yeah, no, load is correct here. So I don't know what's... I don't know why that's not working. Unless your does it... Because they're not bringing the electronics into here. Well, I guess maybe they are. 45. Interesting. This this grocery store here is completely... Like, we're not buying anything. It's like the the test of the, the workflow, right? So if this is receiving what it should receive, then it sh everything should be fine with the distribution. So I guess it's, I'm going to let it go. Okay, so I think we've solved that issue. We've got lots of crops being worked on here. There's a couple of distribution centers right here that are in charge of bringing all the crops into these different silos and all that stuff here too. Um, I have, of course, expanded crops around. I most likely will want to get rid of, like fill in, right, this water area. I, I think I probably need to do that. I'm not sure why that train is... You're not waiting too long, go. I think it's this food train. Yeah, it just keeps going the wrong way. I don't I don't get it. You're you're supposed to come off of this and go to this waypoint. Is this not uh Is this not good enough for you? Hmm? Turn around and go to that waypoint. You silly billy. Go. All right, what the heck? What? What's your deal? You have the you have a method of transporting yourself to that track. I've specifically put this in weird, but it works to get you there. So what's the deal, food train? Why would you why would you not do this? What did you what did you possibly have to stop for? What's this? Okay, that's that waypoint. Let's set a different one. We'll send your waypoint will now be instead of this we'll have you go to this okay that's your waypoint now you should go there please go there you can do this i don't know why you're not doing this i don't get it is it uh i'll have to look at that i'm confused this is all purple this is a line that goes that direction. It's connected to the track, so I know you can do it. Because um, I've seen you do it already. M multiple times you've done this already. Uh, unless it's somehow telling you that you're... No, I, I've seen you do it. It should be set up correctly. So I'm, I'm unsure as to why that train refuses to do what I need it to do. But it continues to go th the long way to where it's destination. And that's a little bit weird. I'll have to play around with that. Okay, so the other thing that I want to talk about. I misread some text. And boy, oh boy, is that misread going to cost me. But you know what? It'll be fun to solve the problem. And I also think there might be just a slight imbalance issue here. It's okay. Um, if it's not imbalanced, it's not imbalanced. I'm not. I'm going to ignore all of these trains waiting. I don't care. I'm going to pause it so I don't get confused and focus. Uh, or distracted and focus. So... I misread text. When I dropped down the livestock farm, my brain is so fantastical. I read 50 tons of livestock per day. I don't know why I would read 50 tons of livestock per day since the export clearly says 26.25 uh, as the maximum storage. But I read 50, not 5.0. I, I, I don't know why. It did not compute. 
And because this says, th this is five tons, okay? At most per day, at maximum workers, we get five tons of livestock. The slaughterhouses consume at maximum 250 tons. 250 tons. So right before recording this video, I turned these uh, slaughterhouses on auto buy livestock so that they would continue make, making meat so I can get the meat train going. Um, but 250 tons of livestock to fully saturate this, which is wild. And they make 125 tons of meat. I saw that part. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw this part. But when I saw this, I went 50. I'm like, oh, okay, no problem. I just need five of these and I can, you know, so I'll have 10 livestock farms and we'll set up my livestock operation right here. I'll need just 10 of them. It's fine. No, 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 not 10. I need 100 of these things to provide enough livestock for these two things to work consistently. I need 100 livestock farms. <laughs> I think there might be just a, just a slight imbalance there. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's just me. Uh, but that's a lot of livestock farms necessary. So I really don't need two of slaughterhouses. But the configuration I had in my, in my head with a meat train picking meat up here and sending it all around the world kind of demands a lot of meat and more than one can make. So I had two. So I might limit workforce here a little bit like I did the plastics just to kind of offset a little bit. But we're going to have to have, if I don't want to auto import all the time, we're going to have to have a hundred livestock and it needs to be away from people because livestock they create a lot of pollution i mean they do cows they fart 3.6 tons per year each which means we're going to be generating 360 tons of pollution more than the chemicals and the plastics combined from the cows uh, so i need them to, like this will be the heaviest polluting area easily um so like i want it to be really far away from everybody and that's why i'm thinking this area over here would be a good spot to just set up this massive livestock operation but i think it might be worth anyway just importing them like at the end of the day it might be you don't have to produce everything yourself right i mean you don't have to it's uh no nation produces everything on itself, right? Everybody trades with other nations. And that could just be the solution instead. Instead of setting up this gigantic livestock operation, which, by the way, will need 5,000 workers to actually, you know, saturate it. And it will need, like, four trains to haul that many livestock over where they need to go. No, I don't think it would be that many. Wait a minute. The, 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 the boxcars, the, the cargo wagons, what is it? Uh, 37 tons per car. I have 30 cars. Okay, so I, I actually can do it with one train. But still, all right, still. We either need to import, and we can get a single train that will maybe go to a border that's close by and import livestock and bring it in here. In which case, if we're going to do that, we probably should just gut this and make it a storage. But then I still can't store it directly from the train very easily because I can't connect this to here very easily unless I... I have to read. No, I'm not going to remake all that. So I have to have a dedicated train station. Maybe here. What we could do is probably because it's, it's weird. This right here, this big footprint produces just five tons of livestock per day and can hold 26. Like that big footprint, right? But the livestock haul range can store 225 and it has half the footprint. So weird, huh? So I think what I might do instead is just have the livestock be like over in this area. We'll do two of these storages. We'll do a train station. It'll probably be right here, actually, just to keep it out of the way. Um, and then we'll have trucks bring it into the slaughterhouses. And we'll just import. But the import pricing is pretty high. Um, it's, it's not a cheap thing to import. If you take a look at the global prices right now, importing livestock will cost you 1,300 rubles per ton. So if we're doing our math on this, our little monster math, we need 500 tons of livestock per day to make all of the, um, like to make all the meat. Now, obviously we're not going to be able to use all that meat. So the meat train will eventually be full and then just wait until it's unloaded and all that stuff. Right? So eventually the train will come in with a full load of livestock and it will just sit there 
and wait till it's unloaded in the storage anyway. So it won't be every single day forever, but 500 tons of livestock at over 1300, uh, I think it's, it's 1332, right? So if we're just generically rounding, every time that train goes to the border, it's gonna buy $665,000 or rubles, I guess, 665,000 rubles worth of livestock. <laughs> it's expensive. Um, but it might just be worth doing that. It might just be worth bringing in the cows from somewhere else and just saying, look, our power exports are offsetting this, right? Our power exports pay for the cows or something. I don't know. Our oil exports pay for the cows. I don't know. It, it could be worth it. At least it's better than auto buying here because auto buying here also includes a 163 uh, surplus for the delivery. And that's no good. And that's what we're currently paying right now. So we're paying 13.32 per ton plus this. And so we could save a little bit of money. I don't know if we actually save enough though. Setting up the infrastructure for the storage, right? That costs about uh, like 200,000 rubles worth. Unless we use resources and of course we can. Um, there's a little bit of track that needs to be made. Then there's the trucks. Can't make those ourselves yet without a lot of extra cost and licensing, uh, as well as the logistics of making uh, cars and stuff. FYI, we're going to be doing that soon. Um, like all of those costs together probably equal about a million rubles. All in an effort to save 164 uh, rubles worth uh, per ton, which, you know, if you're buying 500 or so tons at a time, that makes a substantial difference. But, you know what I mean? Like, right now, we're only buying what we use as opposed to overbuying. So, I don't know. There's there's a case to be made for both. Uh, for the sake of being, like, you know, you should be self-sufficient 100% of the way. Then, yeah. I mean, we're going to need a lot. And then, that's not just... This isn't just, like, 100 livestock farms. You have to have the crops to support it, too. Because each one is going to take 10 tons of crops uh, per day, too. And we're clearly not making enough for that. So, there is... There's a lot to do um, if we wanted to be fully self-sufficient like that. There's a lot to do. In any case, um, I think I'm going to leave the video here. I wanted to see chemicals working, though. And in order to do that, I kind of need... Yep, you're coming right through where you're not supposed to. See that? See that? See that nonsense? Not supposed to do it. Did it anyway. Go to this waypoint, please. Get out of the way. And then we are going to get rid of this track so that that doesn't happen anymore. I told you. They're dumb. I really wish I could somehow designate a track to be exclusively used by a certain train. Like, the only way to do it is with waypoints. So I would have to, like, tell this train specifically to hit a waypoint here, which it cannot reach if it went that way. I don't know. But by doing this, I, I cut that out, too. Because now no train will use this unless it has to stop at the station. But at least we've got that going now. Load up on the crops. And this is long enough, of course, to... The train is long enough to get away from this track so these guys can keep going, right? There we go. I do have to fix trains now, man. There are some serious issues with my train tracks now for some reason. I don't know why. I'm going to have to figure that out. That's going to be like an offline thing, I think. 772 tons... There's a lot to unload here. Um, did we get the passenger train in yet? I gotta see the... Uh... Yeah, this. Did you drop off people? No workers. Doesn't It doesn't think... I'm gonna let it run a little bit um, and fix my freaking trains. And I wanna see people working here. So give me a second. I'll be right back. All right, our chemical train is leaving Sosnikova. I've got the route now to where it will go to Gorod Stali, pick up a load, then drop it off, then go to Sosnikova, pick up the load, go ahead, drop it off. And uh, so this, it, it doesn't have enough uh, workers over in Sosnikova yet to really fill this up. 945 capacity should be plenty for this train. Um, it does go 100 kilometers an hour. I probably should look to add one of those 160 trains and then just add more cars to offset the capacity that I lose from switching it out from a train set. So I probably will do that, but uh, I, it is tested, and uh, they do they do actually go and work. Um, 
says no workers because they're done with their shift now, probably. But uh, they do actually work here. We have had some chemicals made, and um, yeah, it, it does it does work. And I can see the smokestacks; they will light up as people reach their destination. So all of them can be reached. Uh, it's working out pretty nicely. The initial bit of wood that I bought. This is kind of you know a little bit of a bottleneck, just a little bit. But uh, I think it'll even out over time, you know, as we get our supply kind of more steady and these uh, forklifts start to spread out just a little bit. I might go ahead and add another one in this area. I can take this away and add a little intermediary step and then just have one forklift dedicated to bringing the wood into here. But right now we don't have any workers felling trees because these guys come from this train platform. So now it becomes just a big game of getting people to live in these expanded housing areas, which we are currently building. So lots and lots of capacity increases happening for people to live. And if I can hopefully get people living out of living with their, their parents, I've already decreased that number by over a thousand. Um, if I can just keep working on that, then people have more babies and our population will grow and we'll have more workers for everything. So let me know what your thoughts are and how things are going as you guys normally do. It is April, 1986. Everything is uh, looking pretty good. We're not going to have any meltdowns, all right? It's April 21st. Uh -huh. No nuclear meltdowns this, this month. Oh, one last thing, and before we go, um, I just want to show you guys this. So uh, we are pretty much full. You have six in here. There's, this container area is pretty much bang on full. And we are uh, pretty full on storage for containers here as well. We have 1.2 tons of nuclear fuel in storage uh, in this. And of course, this is all full as well. So we are more than enough produ production here. The trucks have brought waste all the way over here. And so what we're gonna do is just have a train and it's actually gonna be this one. Now that it's pretty much done with construction stuff, I think what I'll do is I'll wait till this is fully unloaded. I mean, it's 199 stuff. I could probably just have it go to the border really quick and come back. But this train is configured with the flatbeds that can take vehicles. And so what this train's gonna do is it's going to make a couple of passes. We're gonna take maybe 80% of this UF6, load it on a train, bring it over to the shipping yard. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. It looks a little messy, but it does work. This uh, rail line, it goes that way to keep going. And then it also whips around this way so that it can load up stuff from here. Uh, and then this whole train line is going to be connected. It's starting to, to get done. I've had construction trains coming out and doing this, so I must have just finished this one. So, um, yeah, I'll probably just buy this. Yeah, but we're going to have this shipped out on a ship. Shipped out on a ship. Yep, that's it. Shipped out on a ship. Of course, we have to get the fuel uh, brought out here, too. I'm just going to, for the time being, do an auto purchase on this. I think with dollars. No, that's way more expensive. Maybe next video will be all about fuel so we can get the fuel going. Um, and then there is in this alone, this is like 5 million rubles worth of stuff. So if I can get this on a ship and take care of it and get it out to the world, um, I can use that funding to fund my fuel distribution. So no, we'll see. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate you. We'll see you next time. Bye.